technology, in terms of what people have seen, uh, 3D printing. There's all these different things. Like this, the ship that he went into, there's no seams. He's like, it's all like as if it's m made out of one piece of something, which is 3D printing. I mean, that's what we're doing now. And that there's no instrumentation and that somehow or another these things are integrated somehow with their minds or with something with, where it's allowing them to pilot these things without digital instrumentation and buttons and switches. They're using some other wet method to control these things. And that's what he was supposedly brought in to try to back engineer. Start to say, what is this? How does it work? And he talked about the limitations of having science try to be practiced in a vacuum. And he was like, the metallurgist did not have contact with propulsions experts. The propulsions experts did not have contact with other groups that were studying these things. Everybody was very secretive and everybody was very isolated. And he's like, that's not how science works. And it's one of the reasons why you can never figure out how these things work. That you, you need to open this up to the global scientific community and have everybody examine these things and look at it. But the problem is the military applications. Like if you have something that can essentially use some new element and use this new element that's bombarded with radiation that allows you to manipulate gravity and move at insane speeds almost instantaneously to anywhere in the, the universe. You can't give that to the Chinese. You can't have someone else get a hold of it before us. You can't have someone steal the, these techniques, or the, these, these technologies. So what do you do? If you have this thing, if this thing has really been donated, these things, what do you do? How do you, how do you figure that out? I don't know. But if we have been doing this since the 1980s, Lazar said it's been around far longer than that, but when he was working on it, it was the 1980s. You could imagine that by now, we might have figured out a way to get a drone going that uses these technologies and that these drones can appear and disappear and fly at the same rates of speed. They can hover stationary at 120 knot winds like they've yeah. observed. Yeah. You can imagine that that's out. I, I saw the Phoenix Lights UFO. Did you really? Yeah. You were there? Yeah, I saw Whoa. That. Different people saw different things. What I saw was something the size of like an Imperial Star Destroyer from Star Wars that was like at a relatively low altitude moving over Phoenix. My, like, housemate was like, this, I mean, this is before we had phones, right? Before we had cameras. So it was like, we had a flip phone of anything. And he was like, dude, you got to get out here. And I, like, came out the front yard of our, of our house in Tempe, and we just watched this thing move across the sky. It was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I mean, I believe, I believe in reincarnation, because I came back from D&T thinking that I had a first time experience. I believe that there was something inexplicable in the sky over Phoenix that night because I fucking saw it, okay? And it was massive and it was quiet. <laughs> and then it was just... So, what did it look like? It looked like a massive craft, um, not shaped like an Imperial Star Destroyer, but of that scale, there was more sort of like tubular shaped. Uh, and you could tubular. see, yeah, more like, yeah, more like, uh, yeah, like a tube. Um, and you, but you could see variations in it. It wasn't like totally smooth, you know, and you could see by the way that it was like blocking out the, the stars that you could see that there were like apparatus on it of some kind. And, and I always thought that it was just, it was a military, <laughs> it was a military aircraft where they had, they thought they had a cloaking device. See, now that's what other people saw was, like, was these smaller things on the same night that were explained away as being some sort of military flares or weather balloons or some shit. That's, that's not what I saw. Uh, on the same night, but I'm not the only one that saw this larger scale craft. So I always thought, like, man, that could be a military ship. They thought they had some sort of cloaking device that fucked up. It fritzed out because that's kind of what it looked like. I could see it, and then I couldn't. You know. So. So it looked like a tube, and did well, it? Well, okay. how big were you, were you talking about? Like, like several football fields? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how many football fields? I would say like. The size of a battleship, okay, Whoa. huge. Not an aircraft carrier, but the size of a battleship. Like I would say, three. What's bigger, aircraft carrier, or battleship? <laughs> the battleship, I think, is bigger. It's a destroyer. Whatever's smaller than an aircraft carrier. Show, whatever the ship, show me. <laughs> whatever the ship is that, that's smaller than an aircraft carrier. Air, air, right. So not as big as an aircraft. Carrier. Not as big as an aircraft carrier. What is a battleship? Okay, yeah, it's either a battleship or destroyer. Whatever that next one is. 
I would say three football fields at least. It was huge. You could not miss it. And how high do you think it was above you? No more than a thousand feet. Whoa. I'm really proud to be from Butte. Montana is such a beautiful state and the people here are kind. When you breathe the air and look around, it's hard not to feel like you're in God's country. It's pure, it's American. That's why we call it Butte America. Montana is a big state, but Butte is a small community. My family has known the owners of Town Pump my entire life. They're an American-made success story. They started with one store, and after decades of building, they are the premier convenience store throughout Montana. They hire and employ great people and operate as a team. I even have family members that work with Town Pump. It's no surprise that Black Buffalo and Town Pump do well together. Black Buffalo is also proudly made in America. The company was built by dippers. For dippers 21 and up like me who have chewed for a long time, I genuinely believe their tobacco alternative products are taking over America thanks to partnerships with chains like Town Pump. As someone who's been part of a changing history, it's really cool to watch this play out. After all my years in the military, I'm proudly supporting American Made anywhere I can. That includes the business venture. Yeah, no more low altitude. It was like right over, right over Tempe. And I'm not the only one. That no, no, I know, saw no, many, yeah. many people saw yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually like went on the record with the newspaper I worked for, you know, right away because they were like immediately dismissing those smaller lights that we just saw as like you know, whatever, whatever the ex explanation was. Yeah. And I was like, ah, there's something else, you know, in the sky that night too. So I, I, I love to gamble. If I had to make a bet, I would still say it's human military technology that fritzed out. You know. Wow. But many people said they saw something that looked like a triangle. No, this was not a triangle. Yeah. So maybe there was more than one of these things. Oh, totally possible. Yeah. Remember when the governor did that press conference and came out with a guy in an alien suit and made a mockery yeah. of the whole thing? Which is what their tactic has been, you know. But then that same governor came back after he left office and talked about it. Yeah. And said that he saw something. And, and admitted it, yeah. What was the governor's name? Five Symington. Five Symington. See if you can find a, a audio of a video of Five Symington saying what he actually saw on witnessing the Phoenix Lights. I think later he talked about it. Well, Dang. unlike Five Symington, I was stoned, but I still <laughs> know what I saw. Okay. <laughs> I still know what I saw. And you know, what's interesting is he's, when he's trying to describe the shape, and he puts it at a bigger size than I, than I have it in my memory, I, I, I do remember talking with my you know, friend. Like, it was hard to describe what we just saw. It was like we didn't have a reference. It's, it's just like we're, like we're trying to – let's see if I can articulate this. We're trying to find reference points right. for something that really doesn't have one, right. I guess. Like, I kind of estimate the size, but it just it, – it, it was it – was uh, people describe what the Native Americans must have seen when those boats start showing up. No. But they've never seen anything that large that it probably blew them away. You know, you see the, the Pinta and the Santa Maria and the, these massive boats from Europe right. that, you know, they were like, what the fuck is that? Well, let's hope that, <laughs> let's hope that the... That the beings aboard the craft, if that's what they are, have better intentions than the people aboard those boats. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy that you actually saw it. Yeah. Wow. And you said it just disappeared? Yes. It wasn't like, whoop! And we don't know it. There were some lights, like you said. I remember there was, there were some lights that were not stars that were part of this craft. Could you and describe what those lights looked like? No, they were, they were not colored. They were, you know, white or off-white um, because I remember thinking like are those stars I was, I was trying to like actually see what is the shape of the stars and then I was like no those are attached to this thing. and then it was just I just couldn't see it anymore it was How like the, you lights? know it was like it was, it was like the northern lights some from Alaska right so it's mm -hmm. like the northern lights they're there and then they're not there there's just like this ghostly thing and then then they're gone and it was like that there's a, it was there it was moving at a slow speed 
you know, from my left to right, and then it was just I couldn't see it anymore. But it was like 20 seconds at least. It wasn't like a glimpse of this day. It was, yeah. And how many lights? Mm, half a dozen. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I know people said that they that they that they saw a triangle. So then for a while they were saying that's why he was probably talking about the you know the B2 bomber, the stealth bomber because they're kind of triangular. Um, but it was way bigger than one of those, and it was not it was it was not that shape at all. You know, I struggle to come up with what shape it was because it's a shape that I haven't really seen before. Yeah. So. Wow. And what was your initial thought? That that's an alien spacecraft? No, my initial thought was not an alien spacecraft. It was basically the initial thought was just like, what the fuck is that? And then once I talked about it, it was the same sort of like, want to believe, actually believe thing we talked about several times today. I want to believe it was an alien spacecraft. Yeah. I believe it was probably, you know, U.S. military technology. Real said, yeah. Do you think they had the capability to do that in the 1990s? Because what was when was the Phoenix Lights? Yeah, it was 19. It was mid mid 1990s. I wow. think it was 96. Might have been 97. Not sure. Um, as more time has gone on, though, like you're, you're asking me what I thought in the moment. Yeah. As more time has gone on, I've I've like the needles moved towards maybe that was was actually an extraterrestrial craft. Yeah. Because there's so much has come out, like especially in the last five years, as you know, as you talked about here. You know. Yeah. So. It's just so strange that it all occurred in this one area, in this one night. Right. That has to be a real paradigm-shifting moment for you. But wasn't it? Well, yeah. Well, I think I, I, I was, I, I got so caught up in the like the government's trying to cover up its own fuck up. You know, like they're putting up, the, and then there was the like there was the smaller lights thing and the weather balloon, you know. But I did, I went on the record with the Phoenix New Times. I got there's a guy named Tony Ortega there that wrote a piece about it right away, and I went on the record because I was like, maybe one of the last, you know, I wasn't a UFO enthusiast type, right? right? Like in the community, I was a fairly well-known writer in the Greater Phoenix Metro at that time, and not someone that would be normally associated with like being a quote-unquote UFO crazy. So I went on the record with the article he was writing. It was like, yes, I saw this. No fucking way. It was a weather balloon or a flare or whatever they're saying. It was massive. So. Mm. Man. see something like that but you know to your point about like look at how people about the technology that maybe it's being kept quiet because of the military applications like look at how people freaked out when it leaked about this new russian space weapon right a couple weeks back or three what weeks is that? back whatever uh it's like an ability to s disrupt like satellite communications in space like russia like somehow it leaked maybe deliberately out of russia that they've got this tech far more advanced technology than we thought they had to a weapon that would be in space that could disrupt like communications and satellites and really fuck us up, okay? And uh, like it was, it was, it, it leaked, and then there was this one congressman that like went public with it. And was like, we have a real problem, right? This was like three, as well as in Ukraine, so it was maybe three weeks ago. But imagine if it was something like on the scale of like a ship, the, the a weaponized ship that could be cloaked like that or some of the technology, or, or if we did have, as you said, this donated technology that's from an extraterrestrial intelligence that the U.S. has been figuring out applications for, you'd have to keep that on lock. Because what if that leaked right now? What do you think Putin would do, you know? Who right. the fuck knows what he would do if all of a sudden it leaked that we had these, you know, military capabilities that are far beyond what he thinks we have? That's my thought about these these things that they keep seeing because they always see them in areas where they do military tests right the tic tac was off the coast of san diego which is where all the military bases are and the the things that ryan long had seen were all off the coast the east coast right. in restricted airspace right in space where they run you know fighter jet jet training and and he said when they upgraded their technology in 2014 they upgraded their sensors he said that's when we started seeing these things constantly, all the time. And then they, they were getting visuals. They were seeing visual 
versions of these things. And that it was uh, a square with a, it was a sphere in a square or a square in a sphere. Do you remember? Square in a sphere. So there was like this circular sphere and this black square that exists in this thing, and it's hovering, and it's hovering in in very high speed winds, and it's just station stationary, motionless, and that these things are able to move at just bizarre rates of speed with no indication of a traditional propulsion system, no heat signature that shows that you know you know rocket propulsion, nothing, nothing that we can explain. And if they had a drone that could do that, that's where they would test those things. And what better way to test whether or not people could see them than to run them out there when people are using new jets with new capabilities. Right. Like, can you see them? Okay, they see them. And the fact that, you know, with the Tic Tac, when uh, Commander David Fravor uh, brought this information and reported it, and they showed the videos to these admirals, you know, there were just like stone cold dudes who could just keep it together in the face of some alien technology they know that they were being visited or is this is it really is that when he when Fravor communicated this stuff these guys who were running these these sensors they were running the detection systems were saying we're seeing these things all the time every couple of weeks we're seeing them all all over the place well what the fuck is that and this is also 2004 did they have the ability of 2004 something to go from above 50,000 feet above sea level to 50 feet in less than a second? What is that? Like, what the fuck is that? And people try to, you know, argue it away or explain it away by saying, oh, it's a failure of the detection systems and there's a, there's a glitch in the... Yeah, but the visuals, they mm -hmm. have more than one fighter jet has seen it. They have video of this thing moving at a speed that would turn human beings into jelly. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a biological entity inside that thing and experiences that G-force. You're talking about some fucking insane G-force, like 1,300 times what a human being can tolerate, and just gone, silent. No visual means of repulsion. No, no windows. No. What is that? Is that a drone? What and is the, that? And the witnesses have been reliable too. Like I've, I've often, yeah, I've yeah. often suspected that, like that in the last twenty years, especially in the last five, it feels like the witnesses, the guys coming forward saying, "Look, I know what I saw," are more the, the ones that are associated with the government, even the commercial airline pilots. They'll be on the FAA, but especially yeah. military pilots, you know, they're being allowed to speak. That it feels like the waters are being tested by the government for some reason. Yeah. You know, let this out a little bit. We're gonna let the people that actually people may actually believe, right. like attest to what they, they saw and see how it goes. Yeah. Right. right. So that would be what I would do if I was running the government. If I wanted to hide the fact that we have this, I would say these are not world crafts. That's what I would say. I would say, look, these things are behaving in a way that we can't explain. Well, I guess we're being. Good. And then go right back to whatever black ops thing that you guys are doing. Some Raytheon project. I mean, I don't know what it is. But um, I go back and forth all the time. Whether I think it's from another planet, another galaxy, another dimension. Or whether I think not, I think it's us. Or many people think that they've always been here. And, you know, when you talked about the Vedas. In the Vedas, they talk about these things. They talk about that. I mean, it's in the Bhagavad Gita. It's in there's. It's in the ancient Hindu text. They talk about these these demonas, these crafts, that whatever these beings operate. So in that case, are we just getting better at detecting them, or are they showing themselves more? Well, in unique circumstances, if someone sees something like this, like you. So you see this in 1990, whatever it is, in Phoenix. If you lived 5,000 years ago and you see this, like, what, is that, what does that sound like? What does that sound like? To everybody? It sounds like you're out of your fucking mind. And a small handful of people say it. They, they tell stories. People write it down. It just goes away. Unique experiences are very difficult to classify. You know, if you have an experience with a ghost, a ghost shows up in this room and we all see it, and it doesn't show up on camera. Standing there. Like, what the fuck is that? Well, you're just left with a story. 
you know, if you can't measure it, you can't write it down, you can't, even a video of it, like, what are you seeing? You seen grainy footage of something? You know, when you see, I'm sure you've seen these supposedly leaked uh, images that fighter pilots have taken with cell phones from their aircrafts. Like, what, is, what are they saying? What is that thing? What is that weird, blurry-looking, right. metallic-looking thing? Right. Is that uh, a Mylar balloon that they're mistaking?